All right. So we're uh, most of us are down here now. We started the process certainly of uh, trying to get as much information as we can uh, this week. Um, actually, did some meetings last night. We'll have meetings throughout the week and try to get as much information as we can on all the players that are here. So. Well, this is about my 18th combine. So the priority here is to, to make sure you try to get as much information as you can about the player. We're trying to find guys that are passionate about football. Uh, the medical part tells us if they're healthy enough to play. And then, you know, we want to walk away as coaches um, and try to answer the question by getting to know them as best we can. Are these guys who we want to coach? And so... That's why this is really the first real big exposure for us as coaches uh, in this evaluation process. And so uh, our whole staff is here, and we're trying to get as much information as possible. What do you look for when you meet with quarterbacks at the combine? Well, you're trying to look for, for all the intangible things that a quarterback does. You want to try to determine whether he's a good decision maker, uh, whether he has a sense of timing. You know, the tape tells you whether he's an accurate passer or not. And then you just want to get a feel for, hey, is this the guy that we want to, to lead our team? And so some of it's uh, subjective. Some of it really just comes by getting to uh, know the player. And so, you know, we have a good idea of what a good quarterback is. And so we're trying to see those attributes in all these, all these candidates. No, I think times have changed. Uh, we've seen him throw on tape. He's going to have a pro day where we can see him throw. It's certainly nicer when they do throw. You know, the more exposures you have, the more times we see the player doing what he does, it helps. But, you know, I think times have changed. So some do, some don't. Yeah, I, I agree with... Uh, Really, both your assertions there. I think Eli's, we're looking forward, moving forward with Eli. But certainly with the uh, second pick in the draft, we want we want to draft a player worthy of that pick. You know, I think we've talked about it before, but the last time the Giants had the second pick in the draft, they picked Lawrence Taylor. The last time they had the third pick in the draft, they picked Carl Banks. And those were two franchise-changing players. And so I think we've got to keep an open mind on this. And we certainly want to make our team better. And I think that's the approach that we're taking. How much can you afford, can you afford to, though, to spend that number two pick on a player who makes it an ideal world going to play for the Lions? Uh, we're going to pick the very best player that we can pick at the number two pick. And, you know, we're coming into this, again, we're looking for passionate players that want to be coached, that we feel good about. And we're trying to upgrade the whole team. Yeah, that's a good question. You know, it's it's interesting. He and Eli are in the building every day, and I got to hold back from talking ball with them. You know, so you know, I see them in the lunchroom after they've had their workouts, and so that's a little uncomfortable for me because they're so eager to get going. Um, but I like what I've seen in, in Davis Webb. I went back and watched his tape again from college just to get kind of get reacquainted with him. I like what I saw on tape. Uh, when he played, um, we had ability. Or I had a chance to watch his practice tape, which has been terrific. We just don't have a large sample size of Davis Webb playing NFL football, and so. But I'm excited about you know what he brings to the table. How much can you get off that practice tape? Can you, is there, what, what can you get off? Of well, you can see him drop back and throw and make the right reads and just all those things quarterbacks do. It's, it's way different. I think the second time through on anything, I've said it, you know, a list of things I'll never do again. There's certain things that I need to do in the first month, and some of that I've already accomplished. And I think it's just, you're just more comfortable in what needs to get done because you can see it, um, see it a little better. And I feel good about the staff that we've hired, getting to know our team and the way our organization functions, and, and doing it at a little faster pace. And so, Anytime you do something for the second time, and really the first time you, I did it, um, those that say there's things that they didn't 
see coming are, are full of it, in my opinion, because there's some things you don't see coming, but you get used to handling it. And then there's years uh, since that time where I've become a better coach. So uh, it helps. I think, yeah, I think, I think we know what quarterbacks, and, you know, again, I added Mike Shula, who, again, understands what a quarterback looks like and how to develop a quarterback. Um, we know what we're looking for. Uh, we know when we see it. And so we want guys that are in the building that um, will develop the way that we sort of see them having to develop. And, um, and for guys that have been in the league a long time like Eli, we just want to try to maximize what he does well. Yeah, that's, that's hugely important. But I think your personality needs to be genuine. To your point, they're all different. And what's important is that they're the best version of what they are. They don't want to try to model themselves after somebody else. They want, and so that's what we try to do, maximize the best of who they are. Yeah, I mean, Eli's, Eli's sharp. And again, I haven't been able to talk football with him. I just know him, and he's very smart. Quarterbacks along the way have had to learn other offenses and get accustomed with new schemes. And we call it apple, they call it orange. You know, so Eli's got all that. And so it certainly helps a great deal. Experience, experience really matters for a guy that's a really good player. Um, you know, because he's seen things, he's done things, way more than somebody that we would bring in that would be a rookie. Right. Uh, I think there's a lot of good players in this year's draft, but I think we've got some good players on our roster, and again, we got to maximize what they do. But let's make no mistake, blockers got to block. Quarterback's got to throw, receiver's got to catch, runner's got to run. And I'm just talking about on the offense. And so all the guys that we have in our building need to do those jobs better. And we got to try to maximize what they can do. And then, of course, we're going to try to upgrade all the position groups. And so the new guys that we're bringing in need to be passionate. They need to understand what a relationship is and be willing to be coached. And so the new guys that we're bringing in, that's what we're looking to gain by getting the information we talked about earlier. Uh, I don't know. I think it becomes the personality of the teams in the division. Um, certainly, you know, NFC East is a tough division. You know, we've got the Super Bowl champion in our division. And... Um, but we also have the DNA in the New York Giants to, to do the same thing. So um, the Washington Redskins are an outstanding team, and obviously Dallas is, is obviously an outstanding team. So uh, we've got our work cut out for us. Uh, we were 3-13. and 13. Uh, There was a reason for it. Uh, we own that, and we got to do what we can to get back to those years where we're playing in the playoffs. Right. Yeah. Well, it's impressive. I mean, we saw what – let's get past the two quarterbacks that played last year. They have assembled a terrific team. And so that kind of, kind of pushed them through. The quarterback piece, obviously, is very important. And Carson Wentz had an outstanding year. And I was with Nick Foles when he had his very best year. So I wasn't surprised to see that he could lead them the rest of the way. So, uh, no, I've got a lot of respect for what they've done and um, look forward to competing against them. Pat, how much have you had a chance to uh, talk to uh, uh, Eli yet, and what does Eli Apple mean, and what concerns do you have for some of the maturity issues that happened last season, rolling over into next season if the family issues and things like that aren't taken care of? Eli Apple. i gotta, I got to keep my Eli straight. Um, yeah, Eli was in the building, so I had a chance to visit with him, and um, this is a clean slate deal. And so, you know, I think we all know that we need to, to get better. Um, we had a great conversation. He's eager to get started when we do get started. And um, 
we're going to put the ball out there and let it rip. Are you concerned about the stuff in his family circle in terms of No, I'm not concerned. And as I get to know him better and we start to develop those relationships that are necessary uh, for a player and a coach and an organization, uh, we're sort of starting at uh, ground zero with that. And so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, and, yeah, he's been through, and to my knowledge, he's he's making great progress. So, so yes, and I don't know about the camp part of it yet. He tweeted something about he tweeted something about not playing in a preseason game. Yeah, is that a discussion you guys have had already? We haven't really been able to discuss football, and certainly, uh, we wouldn't have talked about uh, any participation in training camp. You know, but no, we we communicate uh, just kind of on a surface like we have to with all our players, but we've developed a relationship that's that's pretty sound. Yeah, I think Kevin's a tremendous coach and obviously the, the Vikings feel the same way. And so I think he's got a very bright future. He's a good man. And um, the Vikings did a good thing by keeping him for the Vikings. And so uh, I'm hopeful that uh, they have a great year as well. Yeah. Well, I'm encouraged by that uh, because they they feel like the best place for them to train is in our building. You know, I think we've created an environment now with uh, the players where there's so many things you can't do in the off season. So guys go off on their own. They get trainers. They're trained away from the facility, and you don't know what's going on. Uh, even though we can't work and, you know, there's rules with how much we can be around them, the fact that they're there tells me that it matters. And the fact that the, the two quarterbacks on our roster are spending time together every single day, I think that's a really good thing. How do you stand with Brandon Marshall? Yeah, I mean, he's yeah, he's an outstanding player. He, he got hurt early, so there wasn't, you know, much that we could talk about. But... Those are contract deals. We'll talk about it at a later time. Yeah. You can see in college what a quarterback can do, and it translates to our game. Um, and so the word spread is used a lot like West Coast offense or. 3-4 defense, there's, there's many, many versions of those three elements of football. So, um, but we could see it, you know, obviously he was drafted for a reason, and you can see why on tape. Last one. Yeah, Evan, uh, he was a player that we really liked. He's a pass receiving tight end. Uh, he obviously had a really good first year. I mean, there's certain areas that he can improve, but certainly looking forward to working with him.